What would you do if justice for a loved one's murder was locked behind the doors of international diplomacy? In 2012, a chilling chapter was etched into the annals of true crime. The central figure, Agnes Wanjiru, a 21-year-old Kenyan mother, whose life was abruptly extinguished. Her lifeless body was discovered in the septic tank of a hotel two months after she mysteriously vanished. The hotel, a place of refuge turned into a scene of horror, was frequented by British soldiers from the Duke of Lancaster's regiment. Agnes was last seen entering this very hotel with these soldiers. From the shadows of this tragic event emerged whispers, whispers of a possible cover-up. Allegations that pointed to the involvement of British soldiers, a confession hushed, and a crime hidden under the cloak of diplomatic relations. The path to justice for Agnes Wanjiru is a winding one, filled with shadows and silences. The night of March 31, 2012, was a typical one in the Lions Court Hotel bar in Nanyuki, Kenya, until it wasn't. Agnes Wanjiru, a 21-year-old mother, entered the bar, her presence merging with the eclectic mix of locals and British soldiers from the Duke of Lancaster's regiment. Her infectious laughter and radiant smile made her a beacon in the dimly lit room. Her eyes, filled with life and dreams, unknowingly stared into the abyss of her grim fate. As the night crept forward, Agnes was seen in the company of these British soldiers. The camaraderie was evident, the soldiers basking in the warmth of her charm. The night was alive with music, laughter and the clinking of glasses, a facade of joy concealing an impending doom. Then came the moment of departure. Agnes and the soldiers left the bar, their silhouettes swallowed by the darkness outside. That was the last time Agnes was seen alive. Her vibrant spirit, which once filled the bar, was suddenly reduced to a haunting absence. The dawn of April first arrived, bringing with it an eerie silence that echoed the void left by Agnes. Agnes's disappearance remained an unsolved mystery for two long months. Then on a day as ordinary as any other, the horrifying truth surfaced. In the septic tank next to the room where the soldiers of the Duke of Lancaster had stayed, lay Agnes's lifeless body. The once lively woman was reduced to a silent corpse. Her dreams brutally extinguished. The post-mortem examination conducted amidst the shock and sorrow revealed the cause of death. Stab wounds. The horrifying reality of Agnes's final moments sent chills down the spine of the community. The Lions Court Hotel, once a place of joy and camaraderie, was now a grisly crime scene. In the sordid aftermath, the silence of the soldiers was deafening. When power and privilege meet impunity, the truth often becomes the first casualty. The murder of Agnes Wanjiru in 2012 was no exception. The British Army was accused of covering up the crime, a shocking revelation that shook the world. One of the soldiers of the Duke of Lancaster's regiment allegedly confessed to his involvement in the murder. But instead of facing justice, he was reportedly told to shut up. The confession was swept under the rug, shrouded in secrecy, and the army continued as though nothing had happened. A Kenyan inquest found that Wanjiru had been unlawfully killed, and the presiding judge concluded that British soldiers were responsible for her murder. But despite these findings, no charges were filed, no convictions made. The wheels of justice seemed to grind to a halt. Defence Secretary Ben Wallace denied any cover-up, but admitted concern over the army's blind eye to the use of prostitutes by personnel, especially in impoverished countries. These statements, however, did little to quell the outrage or answer the burning questions surrounding Wanjiru's death. Wanjiru's family, particularly her niece Esther Nyoki, were not content to let her story fade into obscurity. And Yoki reached out to King Charles III, urging him to bring attention and urgency to her aunt's case. She asked for a visit, for empathy, for action. But the royal response, if there was one, was not made public. So, the cover-up continued. The truth of Agnes Wanjiru's death concealed behind a wall of silence and indifference. Her murder became a symbol of unchecked power, of the impunity that comes with privilege, and of the victims left in its wake. As the dust settled, Agnes Wanjiru's story risked being forgotten, 
buried in a septic tank and the annals of bureaucracy. In 2021, a whisper of mockery in a private chat room turned the tide. The whispers were screenshots of a private Facebook chat, allegedly run by soldiers of the Duke of Lancaster's regiment. Instead of remorse or silence, the soldiers were seen laughing at the grim event. They were joking about the murder of Agnes Wanjiru, the woman whose life was tragically cut short in the septic tank of a hotel room. Their laughter came in the form of memes and comments, making light of the woman's death. Photos of the hotel where Wanjiru was murdered were shared with the caption, If you know, you know, followed by laughing emojis. Other comments were more direct, with one soldier reportedly typing septic tank accompanied by ghost emojis. There were even jokes about sore throats, a chilling reference to the violent end Wanjiru met. The same soldier, who was alleged to have murdered Wanjiru, added fuel to the fire by posting, Come to think of it, I have had a sore throat today. These leaked chats weren't just a disturbing insight into the minds of these soldiers, they were a catalyst. This blatant mockery of a life lost triggered public outrage and prompted the Kenyan police to reopen the investigation. The soldiers had unwittingly brought the case back into the spotlight. The whispers of mockery turned into roars for justice. Agnes Wanjiru, a name that had been nearly forgotten, was once again on everyone's lips. Her life and her untimely death were no longer hidden in the shadows of a cover-up, but exposed to the glaring light of public scrutiny. Agnes Wanjiru's name was once again in the public eye, her case now a symbol for justice delayed. In 2023, a glimmer of hope emerged in the form of a wide-ranging inquiry into claims of abuse by the British Army. This inquiry, launched with the intention of shedding light on the darker corners of military misconduct, presented a chance for Wanjiru's case to finally be given the attention it deserved. This was more than a simple investigation. It represented a potential turning point in the fight for justice, not just for Wanjiru, but for countless others whose stories had been overshadowed by the weight of military might and diplomatic manoeuvring. In the midst of this renewed quest for truth, a poignant plea emerged from Wanjiru's niece, Esther Njoki. She penned a heartfelt letter to King Charles III, imploring him to use his influence to bring about justice for her aunt. Njoki's words echoed the cries of a grieving family, a community in pain, and a nation seeking answers. Her request was simple. She asked the king to visit her family, to see the human cost of this tragedy, and to lend his voice to their call for justice. As the inquiry unfolds, we can only hope that it will serve as a catalyst for change, a beacon of accountability in a sea of uncertainty. The path to justice is often long and fraught with obstacles, but the resolve of those seeking it remains unbroken. And so we wait. We wait for the truth to be unveiled, for the guilty to be held accountable, and for justice to finally be served. As we wait for the wheels of justice to turn, we remember Agnes Wanjiru and the many others whose stories remain untold, their justice unserved.